Can anyone remember when you had to receipt every single rental payment individually and one wrong error would throw your entire reconciliation out the window and it could take hours or if you're attention deficit like me, it could take days to rectify. Then along came banking programs like DEFT where you could bulk upload all the rental payments. Well, now the game has changed even more. What if I told you that you could scrap your entire trust accounting process and a new software would replace it? This is a game changer for startup businesses. So listen up. Welcome back and thank you for taking the time out of your busy, busy lives to check in and listen to the Property Management Podcast. Now, can I ask you a really quick favour before we dive into today's epic episode? Now, we all know how important reviews are for businesses these days and mine is no different. If you could spare just a few minutes to follow, rate and review this podcast, it would mean the absolute world to me. In fact, What would get me even more excited would be if you could take a screenshot of the podcast and share it on your social or stories and tag me in it. You'll also go into the draw to win one of my personally created property management planners. These were designed specifically to meet the time and work demands of a busy property manager. So if you'd like to take a look at them, head on over to my website at thatpropertymum.com.au. If you are anything like me, you think you know your rent roll numbers. Well, I thought I did until I had a rent roll health check and I was quite literally shocked. The money I was leaving on the table was astounding and this is not something that I'm proud to admit. There were mismanagement fees, let fees, advertising and lease renewal fees not being charged and properties even without bonds. And all of this was happening despite monthly audits being conducted in my business. So how did I uncover all these gaps in my valuable income? Well, I had a rent roll due diligence from my good friend Tazi, aka the Rent Roll Queen and founder of the Tazi Way, a specialist in rent roll due diligence, business valuation and management rights. The Tazi Way is the innovative force driving the real estate industry. With 25 years of business and real estate acumen, they find gaps and risks in your agency to find undiscovered value. If you'd like to book your business in for a rent roll due diligence, head to the link in the show notes and mention that property mum for a 10% discount. Now, let's dive in to this episode, which I'm really excited to share with you. I want to firstly admit that I'm not really a tech savvy person naturally. I'm certainly a curious person and I'm curious about anything and everything that will help me run my business easier, more efficiently, more cost effectively and will streamline things. An important thing for me is also having transparency. No more covering things up. So I'm constantly on the lookout for new tech and software solutions. A few of my coaching clients recently brought to my attention a new prop tech company called Managed App. And they provide a solution to the need for trust accounting. And like many new innovations, there's still a few things to be ironed out. But I highly recommend that you take a look at it. My guest today is Matthew Wilson, and he has a story you'll definitely want to hear. He is a former property manager who spent years in the trenches. He's also overcome a terrible medical diagnosis that turned his life upside down. Now he's the head of sales and a partner at Managed App. But it's not just your average property management software though. They've been pioneers in developing a solution to businesses needing to have a trust account. Their payment gateway is an absolute game changer. No more disbursements and end of month. And if this sounds too good to be true, well, you better listen up. Matthew, thank you so much for joining me on the Property Management Podcast. Now, before we dive in, can you please tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started doing what you're doing? Absolutely, I can. And look, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, So my background, I actually was a property manager myself for seven and a half years. Um, And it's a, look, it's an interesting story, I suppose, how I got into this, uh, this prop tech space. So 
during my time, I uh, sort of worked from from the bottom up, started as a real estate receptionist, you know, went to a property officer, property manager, senior property manager, et cetera, et cetera. And um, during my, my time, I actually uh, was uh, thankfully caught very, very early, but I was uh, diagnosed with um, testicular cancer. And look, again, caught very early, which was great. And I was quite young, so um, quick recovery. Um, but a couple of years later in my career, uh, I had a tenant that I would say I had a very close professional relationship with. And this particular tenant, he was a BDM for a very successful, essentially like an engineering uh, global uh, I suppose firm. And I used to work in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. So we're talking very high end real estate, you know, three, four thousand dollar a week properties. So this particular uh, owner of this property, she wanted a premium rent. Um, the story with this guy was he worked on commission only, but we're talking deals of his commission was you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. And he just settled a deal for, I think a small deal to him was $250,000. And then and then his big deal that was just about to come through was worth four or five million. And his plan was always to retire. So take that money, move down the South coast and, and, and retire with, with his family. Uh, so he needed a, a, a place for six months. Uh, he, he moved into, into this particular property that, that, that I had advertised and um, his first month in his daughter-in-law actually got brain cancer. Uh, and essentially what happened was he, as you would, uh, invested all of his his money into into trying to uh, to save his daughter in law, and and as someone again, brain cancer is not testicular cancer, but I think for me personally, that operation was, you know, tens of thousands of dollars that I had to had to pay. So I can I can completely appreciate on his end uh, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that had to go into into uh, you know specialists and and, and trying to save her. Um, so he spoke to me. He said, "Look, here's the situation. I'm putting that money into that. I'm I'm going to be in arrears." He sent me through this uh, classified paperwork that I wasn't meant to see, but essentially that was the proof to go, here's to show you when I'm going to get paid these millions of dollars. And what I'm going to do is essentially back pay the rent that's owed and forward pay to the end of the lease. And look, the owner always knew that after the six months he was he was going to move out. I was very surprised when I spoke to the owner and, you know, I thought, you know, we've got paperwork, it's going to be fine. And... Um, yeah, I, I called her up, um, very successful owner, um, and I just said to her, look, this is the situation, presented the facts to her, and she said, look, no, kick him out. I want him out of my property. And I was, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was, I, was, I was taken back. I was a bit shocked. Uh, I didn't know how to, how to respond to, 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 the, uh, to the answer to that question, so uh, I think I just sat there and said, okay, and hung up the phone and, and, and I had to process what I was processing. And um, I called the tenant back and I said, look, this is the situation. Um, again, like I need to do things by the book. I'm, I'm going to have to give you these arrears. And I was explained to him sort of what he could do on his end. And I think it was, it was like the next day I called this owner back. And look, this owner, you know, we're, we're talking thousands of dollars to her was, you know, pennies. Like it was, it was not like she needed the money. And I remember asking her and I said, look, what, what, what's the reason why, you know, he's provided his paperwork, he's provided showing that he's going to, um, that he's going to back pay the rent and forward pay. And I remember she said, she said, it's, it's a pride thing. No one owes me money. That's, that's how I am. That's how I've always been. And, and for me personally, no one owes me anything. So it's not about the money. It's about just, I, it's my pride and how I do business. So look, time passed. I did everything by the book, obviously 14 days, 15 days termination notice. And, you know, you have to go through and, and go to the tribunal hearing. And I think this was, this was a really um, sobering moment for my career. And looking back in retrospect, I'll explain why, but at the time I didn't realize it uh, as much as I do now, but we went into the tribunal case and you know, part of tribunal and any property manager that's gone through tribunal can, can I'm sure appreciate this in any way, shape or form. They, they must have had to do it. You, you go to that mediation and essentially that, that mediation hearing is you and your, your, your tenant or whoever you're taking to tribunal in this tiny little room together. There's a guy that walks around kind of making sure that people aren't, you know, in, in, in heated arguments. 
And um, I remember sitting there and, and, and I almost wanted him to get slightly agitated or angry because obviously you'd sort of mirror that, 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 um, that response. And he didn't, and I told him the situation. I, I told him what the owner told me. Oh, forgot to mention the owner called me at like 2 a.m. that morning before the tribunal case. I think she was skiing in the south of France and said, nope, want him out. Let's go. So I explained that to, uh, to, to the tenant. And I remember he said to me, he goes, I know that this is not your decision. And um, I'm sorry that I had to personally put you through this. And that was really hard to hear because he also had other children. You know, I was I was essentially evicting someone out of out of out of their property, and and um, we went into the to obviously to to the actual tribunal hearing, and um, I sat there and, and couldn't speak. Like, uh, you know, obviously I I told the tenant my story about you know my early cancer scare, so I could one hundred percent appreciate where he came from, and um, yeah, it. it it, 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 that was, it was, it was a very sobering moment. And I, and I think it broke me. Um, and I remember I had to leave the, the, the hearing. I went to the bathroom, had a few tears, composed myself, walked back in the actual tribunal, like member walking around sort of just in mediation actually had to speak my behalf and said, look, this is not the agent's decision. But again, cause everything was done by the book. There was nothing that the tenant could do. Like, you know, he, he was in arrears, the arrears gone through, so the um of course the member ruled in my favor and you know and 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 I had I had to kick this 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 um this guy out of his out of his home. And when I say looking back in retrospect, that was a big, a big sort of sobering moment for me. What then ended up happening was I, you know, I was a younger guy, um, again, eastern suburbs of Sydney. I think ego played a big part in that. Uh, I lived out of home as well. I I couldn't, I didn't want to go backwards. So I knew then and there that I lost the passion for my job, um, but I also didn't want to go and take two, three steps backwards. So I stayed in it definitely six months too long. And what ended up happening, especially again, any property manager can 100% resonate to this. Once you lose the passion and uh, you just, you're not putting 110% in and property management is one of those things where things snowball very quickly. Like if you, if you, if you kind of leave something, they, they just snowball. And, and I started um, resenting my landlords and resenting my tenants and, and resenting what I had to do every day, which, which came to sleepless nights. And, um, and then basically six months later, um, I had a few other offers to go into sales, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. Uh, my mother in my grandmother um, in law on my father's side actually passed away from cancer and I remember being at her funeral with my sister um, we took took a bit of time off for that and I remember driving back from because this was in Newcastle and we we're driving back to Sydney and I started getting those those gut-wrenching feelings of the oh I'm, I'm gonna have sleepless nights and you know this isn't gonna be good um, you know, I started going out again on Friday nights and drinking to sort of stop myself from just, just going to bed. It, it sounds horrible, but this is essentially what I was going through. And, um, and that day I decided like the day when I felt that feeling the next day, I decided that's it, I'm going to resign. And, and it, you know, life's more important than your ego, put it aside, go and work a job where you don't need to think and, and you can reset. And Funny enough, that day I kept getting a missed call on my phone and we were playing a little bit of phone tag. Didn't know the number, got a few missed calls, called back, left messages, gave my resignation letter. Um, and that night there was a recruiter for a prop tech company and they were looking for a, uh, a BDM to basically, uh, sorry, an account manager in New South Wales to, to essentially, you know, account manage their, their current clients. And they were sort of shifting from this server base to this cloud based solution. And he, uh, I remember the recruiter said, is that something you're interested in? And I said, well, funny enough, I've actually just resigned from my job. And that is how I moved from being a property manager into the, uh, the world of PropTech. 
obviously meant to be. Sometimes it's funny how the universe works and aligns like that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure your story, thank you so much for sharing that because I think that story a lot of us can can relate to. There's a lot of moments, I think, in property management where, you know, that people being so unreasonable or not being empathetic and compassionate and putting themselves in other people's shoes um, creates a lot of unnecessary um, heartache and frustrating situations, which we as property managers is kind of stuck in the middle. Uh, and there's nothing for me personally, I, I have, I'm a fixer. So I hate not being able to fix those situations where there's n there's nothing more you could have done in that situation and i find that for me that would have created a great immense deal of anxiety and um frustration and sleepless nights so um but it's amazing then that it's you know it's turned around for you and now you're on the other side helping the property managers um so let's talk a little bit about the tech side of things now so you're working with managed app Tell me a little bit about um, what Managed App is and how they're helping the property management industry. Yeah, definitely. So, so to give you the, the I suppose the real quick elevator pitch of, of what Managed App is. So, it's an end to end property management software solution. So, um, you've got your for most of your audience, property me, property tree. Essentially, it, it 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 does what they do. But one of the biggest points of differences through through the Managed App platform is essentially it eliminates the need to run or operate a trust account. And there are some huge efficiencies, um, I suppose, on on both sides of the coin. One is obviously internally for the business, reducing the risk of um, error, theft, mistakes, time. Um, but on the other side, like from a landlord side, it does offer some some um, unique offerings on that side, like a landlord can receive their rent instantly rather than like middle of the month or end of month or in, in, when that agency is doing that disbursement run. And landlords can choose other payment methods to pay their outgoing. So they can elect to pay those out of rent or credit card or, you know, direct debited. And they're always getting an accurate end of month and an accurate end of financial year statement. Property inspections, entries, exits, incomings, outgoings, routine inspections, whatever you call them, you have to do them. And I remember when I first started as a property manager, you had to handwrite the reports and take notes on a digital camera, then upload the photo memory card to your computer and hope and pray that they weren't all blurry or your computer had enough memory to store them. But gone are those days. Thanks to Inspection Express. Now, Inspection Express is not only the number one tool used by leading property managers across Australia and New Zealand, but the leader in groundbreaking new tech in the industry with the launch of 360 degree virtual tours. Now, virtual tours is upping the ante, giving landlords, owners and directors unparalleled 360 degree virtual access to their properties. So head to the link in the show notes to book in your free demo with Inspection Express. I think for me personally, property management as someone that went through it, someone that that kind of came out the other side in in a in a bad way. You know, it, it's something I'm incredibly you know passionate about, and something I really care about. You know, it's an industry I enjoyed. I loved the business development side. Um, you know, the, the property, uh, you know, space in Australia is from a dollar value is, is worth more than the Australian stock exchange. You know, it's, it's, it's a trillion dollar, um, you know, I suppose industry for us. So if I can play my small part for, for property managers in the industry to, to help reduce some of the admin in their day, because a lot of these guys are overworked, they're, you know, potentially underpaid, under resourced, um, under trained. If I can remove, some little part of admin so just just to make their day easier for me personally that that's what excites me and and that's one of the reasons essentially i aligned myself with with the managed app platform um you look at you know what why an owner engages in the services of a property manager it's 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 things like you know obviously the the relationship with their customers it's uh your market knowledge it's not trust again. And I'm not taking anything away from from what a trust accountant does, but I would challenge, and I've spoken to thousands of agencies in my time, and I've never heard one agency say, I picked up that new business because that owner chose me because 
my daily receding was excellent or my my reconciliation was excellent. Um, it's it's not a reason why an owner would, would would choose an agency. On the flip side, though, if there was a mistake in that world, you know that's that's the potential to to potentially lose management. Absolutely. I, I call it three strikes and you're out. If you make three mistakes with people's money, you're gone. They mm-hmm. find a new agency um, and and you, you're out. So mm-hmm. um, I, I love the trust accounting um, efficiencies. So maybe could we just dive into that a little bit deeper and talk through how that works? So uh, even just, you know, so when a tenant makes a payment, a mm-hmm. rental payment, what happens next? Yeah, really, really good uh, question. So, so what I might do is I'll, I'll sort of compare it what it looks like in a traditional trust account space, and then essentially what it looks like with the managed app platform. So, let's just take a round number of say three hundred properties. So, you know, you're 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 an agency that looks after three hundred managements. Now, in traditional trust account world, three hundred managements essentially means you have three hundred tenancies, and each one of those tenancies need to pay their rent, and of course, those funds need to sit somewhere. And what that looks like in a traditional trust account setup is all of those funds essentially trickle and pull into one big bank account, which of course is the agency's trust account. That agency then has the responsibility of getting that big lump sum of funds and essentially receiving that to the property and dispersing that out to their landlords, their creditors, you know, agency fees and whatnot. And of course, in that traditional setup, there's, you know, up to 15 manual touch points. Granted, each of those touch points is only seconds, but 15 per month. What it looks like in managed app, it completely automates that. And how it does that, again, reflecting back, say, with a number of 300. Essentially, what happens in the managed app platform is each property has a bank account attached to it. So, it's not a trust accounting solution. It's a payment gateway. So, it's a lot more sophisticated with the automation and smart wallets and whatnot. But but if I'm a tenant and I pay my rent, instead of that rent sitting in pooling into a big trust account, it actually goes into that property's bank account, which we call a wallet. Very similar to, to, to PayPal where those funds are held there. And then from there, it'll sit in that property's wallet. Of course, if there's any bills or anything due, it will take those funds out of that property's wallet and pay those bills. And then essentially from there, a landlord can go and automatically receive those funds when they choose, could be instantly, could be the end of the month. And it just takes that money out of that property's wallet. And it transfer that directly into the agency's, uh, sorry, the, um, the landlord's bank account. So, so the, the agency fees go out as well, um, like the let fees and all of that sort of stuff is all taken out first That's correct. before then the landlord can access them. So they can do it daily, weekly. Um, if they've got mortgage repayments, it's it, the money's constantly flowing in for them, which I think would be a huge advantage for a lot of landlords. Absolutely, especially we're we're seeing a major sort of uptake on on two parts of that now with obviously the rise of constant interest rates uh, month on month. So one thing we are noticing is a lot of landlords, because again, you have the ability to essentially choose when you want to get paid. But a lot of those landlords that did traditionally see receive their rental income at the end of the month are actually starting to shift to instant payments because they have an offset account attached to their mortgage. So having that money in an offset account obviously helps helps reduce those interest rate rises. But on the other side, which which is very interesting, um, is is landlords are now again like prior to 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 a lot of these month on month interest rate rises, a lot of landlords elected for their bills to be paid out of rental income, which again is is pretty standard across the industry. But what we are finding now, a lot of landlords, um, myself included, actually on this, uh, want, want all of that rental income again to go directly into that mortgage. So a lot of landlords are actually now electing which you can do through our platform to pay their outgoings through credit card or, or pay their outgoings direct debited out of their bank account and not using that rental income to pay those bills. And again, this is something in traditional trust accounting world you actually can't do. Um, whereas in managed app as a landlord, all you need to do is put your credit card details in. Um, it's all obviously secure and two-factor authentication and whatnot. But as soon as that's in, I can choose to pay my outgoings with whatever payment method I want. And I'm always getting an accurate end of month and end of financial year statement. That is brilliant. Now, I'm sure a lot of property managers listening are going to be thinking, is this legal? Like, don't we have to have a trust account? Which is one of the first things that I thought. Um, So, can you just break down, um, you know, and actually I was thinking, when I was thinking about 
preparing to interview you today. I was thinking back to when I first started in our real estate agency, which is like 14, 13, 14 years ago now. And before we actually got set up with the software program, I was manually writing out receipts. Tenants were coming in paying cash and I was manually writing out those receipts. What a nightmare. Um, but yeah, so tell me, it, it's all legal. It's all above board. It complies with the OFT. Yeah, absolutely. So look, for uh, I can go, I'll, I'll go through what those legalities look like. But, but even us as a business, we've had some huge milestones, particularly over the last six months. So we are the preferred property management software solution for the Century 21 network. Uh, we are an alliance partner and to my knowledge, the only property management software solution that have an alliance partnership with the One Agency Network. We are the preferred property management software solution for the Real Estate Institute of Australia. Um, we've transacted $1.5 billion worth of property management funds through the platform. And I don't say these to, to brag, but essentially where I'm getting at is that if this wasn't legal, we wouldn't have even been close to hitting those milestones we have. On the legality side, it's actually quite simple. Um, what it looks like with a trust account and with an agency set up is if an agency holds funds on behalf of their clients, that could be 50 cents for 30 seconds or a million dollars for 30 days. It doesn't matter. If they're holding their clients' funds, those funds legally do need to sit in a rental trust account. The difference with Managed App is it's a payment gateway between the landlords and the tenants directly. So the real estate agency is actually not holding those funds anymore. And I guess to compare it with Apple's with apples, there is plenty of sales agents out there that are running and operating their sales businesses, again, without a rental trust account, because they put those sales deposits in a, say, a conveyances trust account. And they are perfectly legally able to operate. Um, and when it comes to trust account audits and asking about a trust account, the response is simple. I don't hold my clients' funds. It's exactly the same process with the Manage That platform. Oh, that's brilliant. That's very good. So, um, obviously, you are a tech company and tech's always changing and you're getting new efficiencies and new developments and there's probably some really smart people behind the scenes working on stuff. Have you got any um, innovation or any new stuff that's coming out that you can, can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, quite, it's, it's quite a fine line when, when you're working in, in a tech uh, platform, particularly in, in, in this prop tech space, because you've got this fine line of, of, of kind of satisfying the customer's needs for today, but also trying to future proof your platform. So, you know, examples that I can think of is, um, one that popped up a few years ago on your server based solutions. Um, the way that the end of month statements were sort of printed out was the, you know, kind of fit into a letterhead. And obviously now with emails and whatnot, that wasn't as important. And I remember agencies sitting there going, you know, this is really important because, you know, it's how it used to be. And, you know, when you ask the question, you're like, how many, how many, how many landlords do you post in a month's statement? So they're like one. And, you know, so you've kind of got this, you've, and that was, that year again, that was like, like a, a real sort of um, learning curve for me to go, well, look, a lot of like you, you've got this fine line with, with satisfying the needs of today, but also trying to future proof your business. And um, it's 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 an interesting line to um, to sit on. Now, us as a business, obviously payments and, and the removal of the trust account is quite an innovative space. We were the pioneers in that space. But we do have a few other really cool uh, solutions uh, through the platform as well. Like for example, now we've uh, which has been launched for a couple of weeks. You can actually um, borrow micro loans through the platform. So say, for example, I'm a landlord with, you know, uh, I don't know, I've had a tenant in my property for 10 years and it needs a, you know, I was, I didn't expect the tenant to move. And, you know, the managing agent's gone to me and said, listen, if you want, um, if you want this to, you know, you want us to relet this at, at the same price or a higher price, you're going to have to invest $15,000 into new carpet, new paint. And, and I'm a landlord sitting there going, well, I don't, I don't have those funds. I can literally jump into my portal fill out a form through through one of our um through one of our accredited providers and, and essentially within 24 hours I can essentially borrow against my rental income. The way the system works is it'll just automatically take that out week on week or month on month. So you know again like like little things like that. It's it's we've we've got a whole a whole bunch of others that that we're looking at releasing and whatnot. But you know I think I think at the end of the day what we're trying to achieve is we're really trying to shift the 
and again, something I'm really passionate about, really shift that sort of receptive sort of meat in the middle of the sandwich property management role into a lot more of a like investment manager role and and, and being able to provide the tools to, to help get your landlords the best results on their investment and being able to provide the tools to, to essentially provide a better education piece. So you can go to your landlords and say, hey, borrow this, you know, it's all tax deductible, not going to affect you anyway, and you're going to get X amount of dollars back in return. That is so exciting. I'm really excited to see what, what you guys are coming up with and, and what's new. And um, I'm sure we'll chat again down the track as you launch new products and services. Um, now, I'm a really big fan of personal development, and it sounds like you've been on a personal development journey yourself over the years. Um, so have you got any personal development that tools, tips, resources, podcasts that you can share with our audience? Uh, yes, there, there's some, some, I, uh, some books that, are, that I've really enjoyed um, on the personal development space. Uh, Richard Branson's autobiography is a great one. Um, I've really, really enjoyed that. And, and again, I have a lot of respect because um, he's just – look, Richard Branson wasn't the smartest guy. He was, he was finishing bottom in his university. He was finishing bottom at school. And he just went out with a vision and, and built an empire. And, you know, it just goes to show – that anyone with the right mindset can, can go and do those things. Um, I do love uh, a few other books I've, I've recently read. I'm currently reading is uh, how to uh, win friends and influence people. I love that book. And I have recently just read um, the never split the difference. Highly, highly recommend that, especially if you're in like a sales role, it just goes through negotiation tactics and not just sales. Like, Everyday life, parenting, it's 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 well worth a read. Um, it's a guy named Chris Voss who used to be a FBI um, hostage negotiator. So definitely, definitely highly recommend that one. Um, and one more has popped to mind. The I won't I won't swear, but the the subtle art of not giving a that one. That's a, a really really good good read as well. So look very big on the personal development space, but. You know, a lot, a lot of the 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 tools, I suppose, I've, I've put into that are just just self reflecting, even on my end. Um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in every year I sort of review and make goals and make sure I don't necessarily need to achieve those goals, but as long as I'm moving, it could be in the right direction, it could be in the wrong direction, it doesn't matter. But as long as there's something where I can go. I'm moving and I'm not just sitting still. That's been a big part of um, getting me, you know, I've still got miles to go, but getting me to where I am today and um, something that like, I always try and push myself to be better in that front. Thank you so much for that. I have written down a couple of those books, so okay. thank you for sharing. Uh, how can our audience connect further with you or book in for a, a managed app demo? Uh, there's a couple of ways. So you can jump on our website, um, just Google managed app and, and click on the web link. There's a section, I think in the, uh, the top right corner where you can book a demo, um, or alternatively, look, feel free to, to reach out to me. Uh, my email is Matthew at managedapp.com.au with two T's. So, you know, any, any, any way you can reach us, LinkedIn, whatever it is, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to accommodate. I'll share all those links in the show notes and I have booked in for it. I've had a demo and I absolutely love the product. Um, so congratulations. It's, um, it's definitely going to be a game changer. Um, Matthew, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm so grateful for our conversation. Thank you for, for being so authentic and open and sharing um, with us today. Thank you. No, thank you so much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Time management is precious for property managers and with so many tasks to do every single day and week. Have you ever thought about how much time do you waste in an average day troubleshooting annoying maintenance questions? Let me tell you, it's a lot. But there is a solution, Rental Heroes. They are the number one natural language AI conversation platform for real estate. What does that mean? Well, they have artificial intelligence automation that deals with all your tenant maintenance inquiry. It even logs a job into your software, all without you having to do a thing. And if you thought that was amazing, wait till you try their chatbot that collects your leads on your website 24-7. Now, we all need a hero in our life, so make yours Alex. Head to the link in the show notes and book in your free demo. 
If you love the Property Management Podcast, you've got to check out the PM Collective, hosted by my friend, Ashley Goodchild. She discusses things like how to have awkward conversations about pay rises, um, yes please, how to raise the bar in property management, and why so many people just seem to fall into the industry. You've got to love stories like that. She'll leave you with great advice, actionable steps to take, and let you know that you're not alone in any of the challenges that you face. So be sure to check out the PM Collective wherever you get your podcasts. I know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it here. Now, if you're someone who is serious about growing your property management business and you'd like to learn the systems that I've put in place inside my own business that consistently brings in new management leads every single week without me having to do anything, then go to the show notes and take a look at the options for working further with me. Whether that's an online course, one-on-one coaching, or free resources on my website. Until next time, my friend.